they talk about beating a dead horse over and over and over. Like that just proves to you that they need my crappy content. If my content, if I have no content, then what do you have? Your content is literally picking at how I cut my chicken or how I'm praying in the wrong direction when that's not even true. So you're literally inventing lies just to keep your hate-hungry audience eating something because they have nothing, nothing, zilch, no life. And these are adults. Or imagine uh, just being today. Imagine what kind of mother is raising a child, fat-shaming another woman on the internet. Who can see your roles in your, your abaya? And what's your point? I'm fat. Does it look like I care? <laughs> Oh my goodness, Foodie Beauty is not in a good mood at all, and she has just started the holy month of Ramadan. Oh my goodness, girl, you need to relax. You're going to have an aneurysm. Calm it down. Gosh, I hope she's taking her blood pressure. Anyway, today we're going to actually look at Foodie's video and what her channel may potentially have as content going forward into the month. And I really am interested in looking at this mall because she got out and she was walking around. But anyway, just to introduce myself, my name is Ray, otherwise known as Life and Vibe. And this is my reaction and commentary channel. And what we do is we look at health topics found in social media. And the reason being is I'm an RN with over 10 years in the healthcare industry here in the United States. And I do have a lot of interest in current health trends. And I think we can discuss these through the content of other creators. And by discussing these topics and highlighting the need to use evidence-based research, we can use it to validate information and provided in this channel. And so that's what we hope to do here at Life and Vibe. So if you do like it, hit the likes, hit the subscribe, and let's get a quick peek see at what Chantelle is doing today. <laughs> Foodie, it said Ramadan is the month of charity and forgiveness. Uh, obviously, you still have time to show some charity, but forgiveness was definitely not something that was being shown as you raged today in your live stream. I think, as I've always said, a model of that behavior may go further than the behavior that you currently have but i know you get more views on the rages so you know it's it's a, it's a give and take i understand anyway all right girl nobody likes uh salal singing maybe you should try it as a duet hi welcome back to another video hello assalamu alaikum welcome to a ramadan vlog you might hear some fan noise in the background. I apologize. It's quite, it's hot here. So here is a Sahur recipe I made. It is a frittata. It was actually very. Mm. Chantel, I don't think five eggs, a quarter of a cup of cheese, which probably was generously a quarter of a cup and a very generous tablespoon of butter is probably the best dish that you should have. But I think you only had one, two mushrooms? Hmm. I thought there was potato in frittata as well. I thought they usually put a little bit of potato in it, kind of, so you could have less egg. Anyway, I just don't think that sounds like a good start to the day for you. Specifically you as an unmanaged type 2 diabetic. Especially when you're diabetic physician in Kuwait, the one person you probably did see about your diabetes kind of advised you to avoid this type of food. But heck, what do I know? I just work as a registered nurse. Delicious and filling and satisfying and healthy. Hello, guys. Ramadan Kareem. Welcome to the first day of Ramadan. Fasting has officially begun. It is. Mm, foodie, I just don't think you look good today, girl. 
you look a little bit swollen you look oh well that wasn't a good poll story i'm sorry about the licking lip thing I, i've stopped you now i'm sorry i'm not moving forward <laughs> but i did want to say that uh everyone's been remarking about the skin that you know i originally wondered if it was a lupus butterfly arrhythmia but the more i've learned about kind of your hygiene habits and the potential that you have done nothing to manage any type of sanitation and cleanliness with your CPAP, I would suspect that is potentially a dermatitis caused by just a lack of good skincare and good hygiene habits with your CPAP. Those things have to be cleaned out every day, girl. And there's like specific ways to do it. And they do need to be air dried. Think it's a respiratory machine. And if you do not keep it clean, then you could be inhaling all types of spores and fungi and all sorts of mold stuff. I just think it's nasty. And then if you're not cleaning the mask and you're not good about washing your face, and you're putting that mask on over and over and over again, because I can see where it's leaving like a mark. Maybe you're causing a dermatitis because it's not been kept properly clean. And then you, I do hope you have a good rotating schedule about when you're changing out all your bits and pieces with the various hoses and so forth that come along with it. <sighs> I just, you know, I mean, and also if you're an unmanaged type 2 diabetic, you're going to already be more prone to having skin issues because you're having poor circulation to your skin, which is an organ, because you've got too much blood sugar in your bloodstream, and that can be very dehydrating, and your skin is going to reflect that. And it, it looks like it is. I know everyone's been talking about it. And you still look swollen. Anyway, just, you know, be a little bit cleaner, girl. <laughs> it is a holy month. Uh, Post Badger here. And this is my new chill bub. And it's very comfortable. I love the material. Very flowy. <laughs> and I'm um, just... And also, my nursing assessment makes me wonder why do you sound so short of breath just standing and talking about your decorations to everybody i'm very curious as to why well i'm i i have a feeling you're being pushed up on your diaphragm from your abdomen that is my thought and also smoking all that shisha has not been great for your lungs either. I know you've probably stopped off care on camera for Ramadan. I because we don't trust you, girl. Keep going. I'm gonna show you a bit of the decorations we just did. We just did a few simple things. So here oh, are some it. little living room decorations. We have some lanterns. Nope, she's gotta get out the uh Mary Jane nut nougat candies. That as a type 2 diabetic and nougat being uh, primarily made of sugar, I would not recommend that is a good plan. And we know that if Salau probably, he's a little bit, I understand, particular about what he eats. So I don't know if he's eaten those candies. So the only other person that leaves in that house is you. Because even though Howie out the cage girl, Howie's not going to be getting through that plastic and eating out that nut treat. If Howie hasn't been ate by Julia. You got your hamster out of a cage, girl. That's so irresponsible. This one sings. <laughs> okay, what the... I think we all rather have that music at the beginning of your videos than Salau. Just, just, just a thought. Just putting them out there. Just a little idea, Shanta. Light on. <laughs> we have some manwa salwa. It's like a nougat with pistachio. Arabic treat. And some mamul. You just explained this in one of your last videos. So why are we explaining it twice? Or at least say, in my last video, I said this. Because people potentially watch your content regularly. 
So it just sounds uh, redundant. Covered in white chocolate, date biscuits, the Holy Quran. And we just put these up like Ramadan decoration. <laughs> Mm. All right, we also found these twinkly lights. No, the lights, I mean, I understand it's a holiday season. Uh, I mean, the bunting, that's understandable too. It's a holiday season. It. I mean, <laughs> I, there was an effort at least. Is it, you know, ready for home and gardens? No. Is it an effort? Yes. Uh, I see that the curtains are... Looking like it's sort of based on these color schemes, this blue and sort of gold color. Uh, but I don't like the way the curtains sit on the sofa, girl. I don't like that. That's not. <laughs> and, and the room is already rectangular and box shaped. So I think that curtain display just kind of adds to it. And then the colors, you know, I understand now looking at the flags for the holidays where it might come to. Uh, but yeah, and they got like a silky. I just don't like the way they sit on the couch. I just no, I don't like how they block up. It looks like a flag. I'm feeling flags. Madon lights that we had from last year, if you remember, and Salah was able to fix them because they weren't working. So yay! So going out the day before Ramadan starts is probably not a good idea, or you're going to encounter a lot of traffic jams. This one wasn't too, too bad, but it was still bad enough. I like the look of that Audi. Girl, that's not barely a traffic jam. Sweetheart, I, I lived in Mexico City and London. So if that's a holiday, like pre-day, and that's the worst traffic, that's not terrible. And why are you complaining so much? I mean, this is supposed to be like a holiday season that you're enjoying. So why would you want to be starting out this Ramadan 2024 vlog as a Canadian revert living in the Middle East with a complaint about people being out on the streets the day before this month and the holiday or festivity starts? Doesn't make sense to me. Why, why don't you start out with something positive? Why be so neg? I mean... This is why people are telling you to go out and touch grass. Hmm, this, that's going to be a, something funny in a minute. But yeah, why are you just here having a little bit of a moan? Everyone out here probably excited about this time. And it's supposed to be about charity and forgiveness. You're showing no charity to the fact that there's other calls on the road, girl. Get it together. <laughs> we were still delayed. All right, time to prepare iftar, and I'm doing this at around 3 p.m., even though iftar is at 6. I mean, I appreciate she's mentioned it's called a prayer. I don't know about the emoji afterwards. It's a little childish. My thoughts, and I'm looking at this chicken, and I'm a vegan, and I want to move off of the chicken. But I'm thinking that it could have been interesting to know potentially where the call of prayer was originating from in the area. Like, was there a mosque nearby? What time of day was it? I don't know. I just feel like I want to know a little bit more. And, and it was just a blustery. It's just there's always. Something. <laughs> I think this is why people say you're not a great vlogger, because I think most of us want to know more. And I understand why now. And if I were potentially to ever do really, like, good vlogs, I, I would know what was missing. All right, over to the controversial chicken. This is the chicken that she was talking about at the start of the video, that she was so upset that people were talking about the chicken. There's been questions. Well, I think Santa Cook did a good idea of making a chicken dish that's based on the same chicken dish that Chantel is, is attempting to make. And she said it looked like it had been too cooked under the broiler. Sorry, it took me a minute to come out, but I wanted to make sense. So it was basic, and that chicken looked dry. But anyway, let's go on. 
because I want to make chicken gate. my stock for the rice from scratch. I'm making an Uzi style rice and chicken. So I'm going to start by adding a whole chicken in a pot with some water, onion, bay leaf, and a carrot. And I'm going to let that boil down and simmer until I have a nice stock I can use for the rice. I'm going to top the rice with some toasted why am I not shocked? No surprise that Miss Chantel, Fiddy Beauty, unmanaged type 2 diabetic and, you know, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, missing gallbladder, two PEs, hysterectomy, enlarged heart, potentially, <laughs> all these different things, is making a rice dish. Girl, and the, the thing is, it's not necessarily, well, for you, it is the rice. But we did have this conversation the other day that a type 2 diabetic can have a starch in a meal. And for somebody who is well controlled with their diabetes, it would be about a third of a cup of rice. And that would be the only starch you would eat. That would be it. But foodies going to have like uh, the samosas and all these different other bread-based products. So she just can't stay away from the carb. She cannot stay away from the carb. It has got to be just making her blood glucose go out the universe. I mean, wild girl. Almond slivers, and I've just dusted them in some cumin and a little bit of sea salt. And I'm just going to toast them in the dry pan until they are nice and toasty. I'm adding to a pot some soaked basmati rice. I soaked it for about 30 minutes with some butter and a little bit of oil and also some turmeric to give it that yellow. She can't even stop herself from frying the rice in, in fats and oils. It's just she just cannot keep away from those flavors. It's so much better if she were even really able to even have the third of a cup of rice with a meal when she eats like that in a spoonful is to use like a rice maker that you could just steam rice and get a rice that really hasn't been saturated in fats and oils and butters and all these things. She just cannot stay away from this stuff. Anything, it's why her home cooking is no better sometimes than the takeout she eats. The takeout is not great. Because that's all bread, all sodium, all fats, all cheese, you know, just ugh. This, again, though, she replicates it in her home kitchen with using, and, and who knows how much sodium she's adding. How, how much salt went into that frittata? Yikes. Color. And now I'm adding the broth. Look how nice my chicken broth turned out. It smells amazing and, you know, I usually use just those like bright yellow bouillon cubes. Sorry, my cat's playing with the bag in the background. <laughs> but this looks so much more appetizing in my opinion. All right, so here is our first... If I don't know, I saw it look like a big lump of rice kind of swirling around in there. All right, explain this meal, girl, because it looks very... Well, there's very few, if no, vegetable here. Um, the carrot that got boiled for stock got thrown away. <laughs> Tar, Ramadan Kareem, everybody. So, to start off, to drink, we have water, of course. We have some uh, vinto, Ugh. some chicken noodle soup, which I won't be having. Hmm, why? And this is chicken uzi, and it's a flavored rice. You saw how we made it with the chicken stock. Didn't she say her stomach wasn't feeling very well? on her last live and she was up and down to the restroom. So why would chicken noodle soup not be the thing that would be the best thing for her to eat? Because if you have had an upset stomach or a stomach flu or anything of that nature, you definitely want to stay away from dairy products. So even if she thinks that yogurt is a good probiotic to eat, if she's really had any type of upset stomach, then I would avoid the dairy you're supposed to stay off the dairy definitely don't want to have some type of spiced rice with all this stuff the chicken that looks dry as heck i don't know and it looks like a duck's head almost i don't know it does not look appetizing and it looks 
really charred. I would. I don't even eat chicken. I'm just saying. I never like chicken. I don't eat any meat. I'm plant based. But anyway, I would say that obviously in a big old pile of rice. I, you know, this the most. The chicken soup, I mean, it's still cold for you, girl. So maybe one spoonful. It's not really much on this table. I, if you had an upset stomach, I would suggest to eat for a while until your stomach righted itself. You're supposed to have a bland diet. None of this falls into that category. Except, like I said, potentially the chicken. But if if you cook that thing and brined it down and you added salt to make stock or, or look like more like a broth than a stock, actually, then I would think that would be... Just uh and then the salad, of course, with all the bread in it. Oh, and the vento, which is a cordial, which is full of sugar. I would say, oh, and then there's no vegetables, there's no all of that beautiful eggplant or aubergine, as we would say in the UK, and all of that beautiful uh looking uh carrots and I can't even remember cucumbers I, I guess there's cucumbers in the salad up there but it's covered in oil and that romaine is now just saturated in oil and then she cooked everything in stock just to add more fat and grease and everything else to the meal I just would not think this is healthy I just it's a a possibility, Chantel, that you just really don't care. Oh, no, that's right. You don't care. That's what you said at the start of this video. You don't care. That's right. You don't care. Some parsley and I'm just helping um, almonds. Hi there. Editing Mariam here. I just wanted to add, uh, you're probably wondering how I got the chicken to be kind of, you know, well done like this. Well, I did use it in the stock, as you saw. So then it kind of like simmered and boiled. And then I cut it into quarters and seasoned it again, brushed it with a little bit of olive oil and put it into a 400 degree oven uh, for another 20, 25 minutes or so. And it turned out like this, nice and roasted. And some roasted. I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that actually eat meat and would say that meat is probably pretty dry now. Maybe only Julia is going to enjoy it. And Howie, he's supposed to, he eats chicken. That other dish, the samosas, they look burnt too. The chicken. We have some feta cheese sambusa. Oh, sambusa. Some homemade fatouche and mm. some yogurt. Yeah, keep away from that fatouche. Julia, I'm going to have to pray here. That bread salad. <laughs> oh, Julia. Are you making sujud? I really love our little apartment. Well, I have to say, Julia looked like she got a brush, but she don't look happy. Oh, that's not a very pretty view. <laughs> I like it when they can kind of peer around and she actually can see the beach, but I guess you have to angle yourself. And it seems so that the apartment that they have really looks more directly on at another set of apartments. It's very rectangular. I would be kind of depressed if it were that small and that was my view and I didn't get out like Chantel. L luckily, she's going to get out today. But she got out in the car and complained about traffic. All right, let's keep going, Chantel. Well, you know what? Oh, well, she did complain, so maybe she did actually go. It's not perfect, but for me it is. And it's just right for the two of us. It looks clean. Masha Allah, I'm so grateful for everything Allah has provided us. You guys? <laughs> so that's very interesting. And one of my first, you know, well, not my first, because I was assessed kind of the look of her skin and that dermatitis around her face. That she talks about being rosacea, which could possibly be, but she's exacerbating it, that's for sure. It's interesting that Chantel obviously is somebody who has a lot of vanity, but she also is somebody who wants people to be respectful that she is becoming less able-bodied. 
but she's out here walking. She doesn't want people to shame her or bully her for her weight, which I understand. But she also is somebody who said, right, uh, you saw at the start of this video, who is aware of her size and doesn't care. So it's interesting that she then, with all that said, chose to cut parts of that video out of her praying to show her only being somewhat mobile because it didn't show her getting from a standing position down to that seated position because I'm sure it took some effort and then did not show her actually getting them up from the floor. So any of the really complex mobility things that would have shown us that she's still able to move quite well, she chose to cut out. And I think that's very telling. And I think that's obviously done specifically because she is vain. And even though she'd love to be bed bound and Queen of Sheba and waited on hand and foot and so forth, she still does not want people to see how poorly she moves. And I know she struggled getting up and down and probably had to get Salal to help her. I would not be surprised because for somebody that size and so immobile for the most of the day and does such little exercise, I can't imagine that she moves a great deal. Now, here she goes out to this beach. And I think the amount of time that we literally see her walking is going to really be the only amount of time that Chantel does any walking for exercise. And part of it, she does go to sit down. So we're going to watch the vlog. And I'm going to make my assessment about her as we go along. So far, what I see is somebody who needs a pair of sunglasses on. <laughs> because I would not recommend anyone in such bright sun, especially up against that pavement, to not have sunglasses on because it's going to reflect to your eyes. And as we older we get, the more likely that can help contribute to cataracts. I'm very protective about my eyes, but I did live in a high altitude city, Mexico City, for an extended period of time. And I probably, the sunglasses I wore were probably pretty cheap, um, even though I did try to wear sunglasses. And uh, there were times when I was at the beach much younger, I wore no sunglasses. And so I know I was just out there squinting away and hating it. Now I cannot even step into water without my prescription sunglasses strapped to my head because I cannot even see. People are like, oh, you should take your glasses on. I was like, I will be so uncomfortable with the light of the sun reflecting from the water and into my eyes. It's actually painful. Uh, so, yeah. And she looks very swollen. Like, you can see where her forehead is really crinkled up here. And she has very heavy fat pads above her eyes. Very, very heavy. She's going to be very hot, very quick. Uh, like I said, she doesn't really spend a lot of time out there walking. So not good. She needs to do it every single day. It's a beautiful sight. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of uh, tankers back there. I recognize those types of boats because I live near a port city too. So she must live quite close to a, a, a major port. There's a volleyball net here. And we have a ball. Not a volleyball, but we have a ball. So maybe we will come play ball one of these days. At least you got a wedding ring on. I doubt that's going to happen because Chantel... Hey guys, very windy day, but it's like 20 degrees Celsius in Kuwait right now. It's very sunny though, so it still feels pretty warm. <laughs> Quick tip, Chantel, since you do have an audience that is international on YouTube, do Celsius and Fahrenheit just to help people out. I can't remember. I think it's like multiplied by three times plus 13. So what's that, 60, like 73, is that right? I'm going to say it's around 73 degrees. Sounds about right. <laughs> Something like that. I think that's the, I think that's the equation. That's just off the top of my head. But it'd be helpful because I can't remember because I don't convert like that. I've lived in the States now too long. I just go by Fahrenheit. But I understand where 20 Celsius sits, even if I don't know the exact. All right, nobody wants to hear me. But girl, mmm. Sorry, I just thought she waddles when she walks. She is an absolute waddler. Waddles from one side, waddles to the next side, waddles from one side, waddles to the next side. 
get the sunglasses on. Come on. Just be prepared. You're already going to be a hot and uncomfortable and black. But just, I'm going to show you guys the beach. Look how the water is, the beautiful colors. Wow. I wonder if that's a, like a shipwreck or a ship in the distance. Oh, it looks like a tanker. She's trying to get cats. Airy, her cheeks. Wow, she's really started to get much bigger since she was even in Canada. That is wild, Chantel. Girl, you need to be honest to yourself about your size and honest to yourself about your weight. I don't know. You, you, you see, look. You need those sunglasses on. You're putting your hands up to protect your eyes. I could tell you were going to get, and you're just, you're trying to swing and look like you're walking well. This is right near us. I can't believe it. Chantel, you can believe it because you've shown <laughs> video out the window showing the beach. You know it's there. Everyone has said it's there. And for whatever reasons of reluctance, you have not wanted to go down on a daily basis and actually enjoy that beach at all. And you really have needed to because one of the things that is recommended to help manage some of your health issues is actually to get out and do some exercise. And it can be something as simple as walking. But I think something is causing you pain and you're calling it sciatica. And I don't think you can diagnose yourself with sciatica. You have to have a professional. And you've had no physical therapy. And there's a lot of things that lead people to think that sciatica is not what you've experienced. And peripheral neuropathy or maybe some type of sore on your foot too along with it. I almost think whether or not you're getting some type of peripheral venous uh, disorders or peripheral arterial disease at all, just because of the fact that your blood sugars are so unmanaged at this time, and that can start to cause a multitude of vascular issues. Also, you have been smoking a fair amount of that shisha. And I would think that it could potentially cause the same type of complications that smoking can and causing damage to your femoral arteries, possibly starting to cause some type of plaque buildup. People actually have to get stents in their legs to open up leg arteries to get blood flow to them as well, you know. I mean, there's all sorts of places that the body can be affected. And then you don't walk a lot. And I think, too, that obviously the amount of weight you carry, and I'm just going to be honest, and you can call it shaming, but unfortunately, that is a lot for your back to have to carry. And so I would think that has to hurt as well. And there's a lot of things that you look like you're doing to compensate when you walk. We all know you have what you refer to as your, you know, pooper, right? <laughs> but that is something that could be causing you, you know, discomfort as well. I just think that there are so many things going on. We've talked about having low vitamin D levels for you. And that can actually, because it's related to bone health and you do not get outside, you do not get enough sun. And even if you were outside, you're very covered up. And I don't think that little peak of face or hand would be enough to absorb enough sunlight. And also, as we get older, our ability to absorb vitamin D changes and we actually need much greater quantities of it. And even if people are outdoors and trying to be outside, you're probably going to have to have some type of supplementation and have it monitored by a physician so you know exactly how much to take and what your doses should be. Because you can do too much and then if you're having to excrete things, that could actually potentially cause more work on other organs like your kidneys because it's got to filter out all this extra stuff. So it is a lot more involved than just looking up Dr. Google 
and trying to figure things out on your own. All right, girl, keep on walking because this is the two seconds of exercise you got this year so far. Oh, I'm a little facetious. But you haven't had much. You're about to sit down probably. You got to stop walking, I see. Can't even continue walking for more than 10 seconds, girl. You weren't even walking five seconds. I should count the seconds. Oh. Okay. Oh, that poor bug. Chantel, the etymologist, <laughs> she did not <laughs> look great walking. And the fact that she has to, you know, for most people, it would be just walking and a tourist video. But with Chantel, it was a lot more underlying. It. One, for people who purchase food for her through potentially, allegedly, other sites and do see the results of it on YouTube. And that's a whole other thing. And they may find what they're seeing to be great and positive. And that's fine. But as a healthcare professional, I know that she's had a lot of health issues, especially unmanaged type 2 diabetes. And so that always has to be kind of underscoring anything about all aspects of her health and her diet. One of the things I kind of noticed is that if I was looking at her, and I don't know if the camera film has been reversed at all but if i was looking at her straight on it looks like it was her right foot on her uh, and it is turning outwards and so that's why i think it's a camera flip because i feel like it was the other the left it looked like the left last time so i wonder that if the film that's why i always wonder with the film it's hard to gauge depending on what you're filming on i think too and if you, you like i said flip the film around but anyway on this time, it looks like the right foot, but it kind of goes out at a 45 degree angle. And it makes me wonder, is that some type of compensation for an injury? Is it to help compensate for the weight? But it is definitely not going straight ahead. And usually when somebody is walking, obviously your toes are pointing forward. And it doesn't, you know, think about the video with glitters and lasers recently. It looks like she's maybe not bending at her knees as she walks. I don't know. It's hard to tell because she tends to wear things that are long. But I feel that she doesn't bend at the knees. Like it's like I feel like she waddles and brings her legs around. Um, and then she's got that one foot that is just going at that 45 degree angle, which is very odd. Very odd. Lots going on. You. <laughs> it's kind of cool looking though. Hey, little alien. This is a beetle. A type of beetle. Mmm. <laughs> he doesn't mind. Oh, okay. Well, how do you know he doesn't mind? <laughs> you don't talk beetle. Why do these two always have to be up and messing with wildlife? Just leave wildlife alone. If you want to film it, that's fine. Seems odd in a Ramadan vlog, but you go at it, girl. You like the little beetles. It's not an alien, girl. It's the same from the same place you all. Ugh. Oh my goodness. That's not your best view, girl. <sighs> I've heard the filters are elongated and that black is not always slimming. Look guys, I'm touching grass. <laughs> well, Chantel, people just say that for your mental health, girl, just to get you outside. That's why people say go outside and touch grass. <laughs> <laughs> and also to stop you being such a rager, which you were raging today. So you went outside and touched grass. It obviously didn't help because you woke up and raged at people about chicken. 
hold it together. I mean, you really are going to give yourself some type of blood pressure event if you don't mind yourself. And that is not your best angle. Jeez, I just looked up. That is not your best angle. You are very uh, rounded. All right. So while I'm sitting here, I just wanted to talk to you guys a bit about, you know. And I'm going to let her explain her little bit here. And I don't want to be disrespectful. So I'll stop her here at this time. Girl, you're already sitting down. How are you already sitting down? You walked down a little pathway. You walked up to here. You stopped. And this could be edited, you know. And you stopped and you looked around and you looked like you wanted to sit down. So maybe you sat down at that point and then filmed this part. And then you walked up and did that weird little, you know, tiktok -y type thing with your hand. You're not proving anything except that you don't get out and that you don't exercise and you are not in great shape. That's all you're proving at this point. And we saw that you could not get up and down from a prayer mat because you edited that part out purposefully. Very shameful. And just a couple of days before your 40th birthday, I would be ashamed because you were born able body and you've been given a lot of access to money and resources and a beautiful looking amount of fresh fruit and this beach that you could be walking at every single day. But you've chosen to sit inside a shoebox, eat takeout and rage at people halfway across the globe. What an existence you have. You know, what the spirit of Ramadan really is, especially for me. So Ramadan is not about, you know, how fancy of decorations you have or how fancy of dress you have um, or how big of meals you prepare. It's actually just meant to be a time of spiritual growth, of growing closer to Allah. And it's a time for reflection, a time for fasting, a time for appreciation. And it's a time to be modest in everything, in every way, and just commit yourself to Allah, doing a lot of praying, praying those extra prayers, and just focusing on prayer and your relationship with Allah. That's all that Ramadan really should be about. Um, you know, I know we have like a few decorations, but we didn't go all out. We just kind of, again, I just, we just want to focus on basically what the focus And I know at the start of this video, she was upset with people fat shaming her and so forth. And she was raging. So all of these things that she's talking about, her focus is somewhat untrue when you start the next day with a rage stream. So just, just kind of be aware of that. You do not look great sitting on that wall. You look like you have your penis sitting on your legs. And penis is a very polite way of saying that abdomen. And it looks like it was sitting, like sitting on your legs. Like, not like somebody who is still taut of the tummy and it's sitting, you know, and therefore it's not, you know, it's touching the legs, but not resting. Yours is resting on your legs. Your abdomen is resting on the top of your legs, Chantel. You are, and you don't, you look so swollen in this shot here. You, you're, I mean, I know you're squinting, but your face, you're, you're putting weight even to the face now and the swelling. I understand it's probably uncomfortable to walk, but you need to do either some steps at home, something. If you don't want to go outside and do it, do it on it with watching a YouTube video. There's little step videos you can step in place, but you need to start doing something. This is, I don't even know if just, that's not going to be enough. You need impatient care, as we always say. But if at least if you want to do that, this is going to be hot soon and you're not going outside. Focus of the spirit of Ramadan really is, and that's really just your relationship with Allah. Another thing that's really important for Ramadan is a time for giving and charity. Um, so that's another thing that's very, very important during this time. So, all right, guys, so I'm going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. There will be more to come. And I really appreciate you watching. So 
thank you so much and Ramadan Kareem to all my brothers and sisters and everyone else. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Stay blessed. Oh my goodness. That picture of her and Salau. She's definitely put some type of, of slimming cut. That looks like it's been photoshopped onto that beach. At least, okay. <laughs> yes, that looks like photoshopped onto the beach. Like she got, they got a picture of them two together. And then Foodie got in there with some photo editing and she definitely slimmed herself down because I can even see where it looks like she trimmed away because I do my thumbnails and so forth. So this was an edited photo put in front of that wall at the beach. <laughs> oh, girl, that's such a Photoshop fail. That is a Photoshop fail photo. Okay. All right, guys. Well, we're just going to end it right there with Miss Foodie today. She has certainly given us a lot to look at. <laughs> and a lot not to look at because uh, another reason uh i know this is a photoshop fail is the picture in between these two pictures she is remarkably a little bit more rounded than she is with this photo this was definitely slimmed down by her i can even see where she did the cut so that was so somebody just took a picture of the beach then they took a selfie somewhere could have even been at the beach but she then, she trimmed this picture out and overlaid it on top of the beach. <laughs> you can do that on Canva without a problem. Oh, girl, that's hilarious. I love me some foodie, man. Okay, guys. Well, foodie went on a rager. And I, I don't know if I will. I may cover parts of it just because she does mention some aspects, I think, of her health. It's usually the things about her health I'm more interested in than anything else. But anyway, if you do like this type of content, don't forget to hit the likes. Please subscribe if you haven't done so far. And if you'd like to leave a little beach umbrella in the comments, if you got to the end of this video, then that would be wonderful. So leave me a beach umbrella to signify beach. And we will catch up with you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.